Stalker Immortal, um, a Stalker Immortal Void Ray Ball will, uh, oh, whoopsie doodle, a Stalker Immortal Void Ray, Ray Ball will rip me to shreds. Uh, however, at the same time, just let me deal with that, thank you. At the same time, um, one, if you're going up against a Mecking Terran, guys, listen to me, just go, like, four centuries, the rest zealots, immortals, void rays. You'll you'll never lose a, a mech game again. So back into this game, uh, we see that the Protoss is on ground one zero, while the Zerg is on uh, is about to be on one one zero. Interesting choice, considering um, he only has a partial amount of Zerglings. And I would have actually rather have seen him get uh, get Carapace there. Uh, a handy trick on this map, especially. Charge up your Void Rays on these destructible rocks. Not only do they open up an alternative attack path for you that forces the Protoss, or that forces the Zerg to cover multiple areas, and here we can see some lovely harassed by the Mutas. Not only does it uh, force uh, open up uh, on a multiple attack path that the Zerg is forced to cover, but even better, it charges your Void Rays. So that is a two for one, uh, just like if you have a queen standing here waiting for creep tumors, have it attack these rocks. Sure, queens only do one damage per arm against the rocks, and it'll take 500 hits thus. It doesn't matter, alright? You can still gain something from it. Now, uh, I don't know if continuing to get Void Rays. I mean, a Void Ray Stalker Colossus Ball is probably what he's going for eventually, but until he gets on 4 base, that's a little bit impractical, and with these Mutas out, it's going to force him to either get some Phoenixes, enough cannons to really prevent them, or he's going to need to get Blink Stalkers. I think Blink Stalkers are an excellent unit in any situation. In any matchup, they're good to get. I think Blink is an underused, uh, is an underused thing because you don't see a lot of stuff melting the Stalkers. You're wrong. Everything in the air is weak to Stalkers. You care to know why? Look at the Stalker. The Stalker does 15 damage versus Armored and is Armored itself. What this means is, as it's Armored itself versus things like Phoenixes and um, Phoenixes and Mutalisks, uh, their damage is reduced because they're Armored. And versus thing and because they do extra damage versus Armored versus things in the air that are Armored, say Battle Cruisers, Carriers, or Broodlords, with the uh, the first and the last actually they're the only ones you're going to see during play. Uh, they're good against that as well. So Stalkers are a great all-around unit, and with Blink, they're super mobile. Now back into the game, we see that Kid's Jiba is currently on... Uh, he's currently upgrading his range uh, his range damage as well as his uh, total armor, and he is currently ripping this ball to shreds. Uh, he should really pull back his sentries here, and he needs more Stalkers in this. Um, uh, these Immortals could do a lot of damage if the Zerglings didn't run them down. Oh, he actually ignored the Zergling, or he actually ignored the Immortal there. What you really want to do is you want to kill the Immortal with the Zergling, so that way it can't deal damage to your Roaches. But this is a really big force, and some good force fields there, but great burrow underneath the force fields. Meanwhile, back home, I'd like to see Kids Jiba, first off, spread these Overlords out. He should have done that before. Second of all, have your Overlords be vomiting creep. There's no disadvantage to creeping up a bunch of expansions. And finally, he should be taking his fourth right now. Alright, he is applying pressure, he has map control, he has an upgrade advantage. Um, he's also using Mutas, and he's using Mutas to harass all three bases. Set up your fourth, you have the control, you can creep it really easily, and then you get to take the center of the map. Alright, there's no there's no problem there, you have enough Mutalists to easily give you map control, and Mutas do that instantly. Uh, however, these Mutas are about to be intercepted by some Stalkers there. Now, if these Stalkers had blinked, uh, they could have just blunked down here and killed a bunch of mutas, but instead he chose to invest in extra gateways, he's getting his robo support bay, which is good, and he has his twilight council researching blink, good boy. Uh, now we still have these mutalists causing some trouble, in the meantime back in Kids Jeeva Space, he has yet to spread out his overlords, and he's finally taking his fourth. Uh, back in the upgrade station we see um, weapons attack, or missile attack level 2 is researched. Uh, Carapace is not researching, and his queen is having a little bit of trouble injecting all her larvae. Uh, I'd also like to see some extra queens at this point. Kid's Jiva has actually been macroing like a boss, um, but, but he's been doing it with too few drones. That explains why. Um, first off, I'd like to see him drone up. I love the infestation pit. Infestors are a great all-around unit now. And in the meantime, I've been missing something interesting. Mutalisks are tearing the, uh, are tearing the void rays apart, but in the meantime, the roaches are going into an absolute slaughterhouse. These are, uh, zealots hard counter, or pardon me, zealots counter roaches, stalkers counter roaches, immortals counter roaches. However, the roaches are burrowing underneath the force fields, but at the same time, there are too many stalkers there for the mutalisks. The zealots have a, the, the zealots have a partial surround, and the immortals are just doing unbelievable damage. Three kills on that mortal, four kills on that one, and three kills on that one. However, there may be too many mutalisks here to survive. Um, he, oh my gosh, is he really pulling back? These, there, he has more than enough stalkers there to take out the, uh, to take out the the Zerg forces, and he continues to pull back. Uh, now the Mutalisks flying into the Stalkers and are just getting ripped apart. However, the Roaches have finished off the uh, Immortal. Uh, the Stalkers have blunk on top of the Mutas. They're looking to take them out so that way they can warp in some Zealots and therefore be, uh, or 
that he's looking to take out the Muta so that the way the Void Ray can, um, can rain. Uh, in the meantime, back at Zerg Space, he has yet to expand those. He has yet to work up to Hive. He has yet to get any upgrades back here. Uh, that fight, he could have just burrowed and run away and then gone back to macroing, but instead he decided to go into an all-out fight. Let's open up the production tab. Uh, oh, that's the spending tab. Well, that's actually interesting, too. We see that the Protoss has actually spent more on economy. Now, that could be because he's lost more units, although it is very close. Uh, but the Protoss is at a 22 drone advantage. That's very bad for Zerg. However, Zerg does have the upgrade advantage, and that is what will really do it. For any of you ha who haven't seen Thorzane versus MZ, go watch it. First off, you get to see... Alright, that was for spoilers. If you don't know what happens in Thorzane vs. MC, go watch it right now. Uh, I'm going to give you five more seconds. Alright, in Thorzane vs. MC, we see Thorzane, who is, by the way, my new favorite foreigner sans Jinro. Um, Thorzane beating arguably the best player in the world thanks to his solid macro and upgrades. He did micro some during his battles, but in his defensive battles, he just kind of ignored it and sent his move, his units to attack move. In the meantime, he was macroing back at his base, and MC forgot to get upgrades, and because of that, Thorzane was able to rip him to shreds once he got 2-2. Uh, getting early upgrades is so valuable because it compounds all your units. So if you're Zerg, get early Carapace. If you're Terran, you have to choose whether you're going to go bio or mech upgrades. Um, and if you're Zer or and if you're Protoss, get ground attack. Get ground attack. Get ground armor and max out on ground because then your Colossus Stalker Ball will be unkillable. In the meantime, we are watching an excellent battle here. He blunk away against the Mutalisk, but the Mutalisk can fall, and there are too many roaches. He's probably going to win. If he can take out that pylon, he could win the entire game. In the meantime, back at his base, he is chrono boosting out some. Uh, he's chrono boosting out a Colossus. He's not using his warp gates effectively. Uh, he's continuing to blink away to get the most money possible out of these stalkers. He's warping in two zealots. Uh, I just don't think that's going to be enough considering the amount of roaches. He would need a bunch of immortals, a bunch of stalkers, but these roaches are just going to be able to waltz in because of it is 1-2 upgrades versus 0-0-1 zero, zero, upgrades. That should be it, folks. I don't see any way the Protoss can come back. If he can just take out that pylon, that is six gateways completely taken off the market. Can he do it? Come on, hit the target the pylon, target the pylon, any GGs. Right there, folks, we saw an excellent game played by Kid Jiba, uh, fundamentally, how, or pardon me, uh, micro-wise, and he had an excellent sense of timing there, but he could have macroed a little bit harder, he could have spread out his overlords, and he could have expanded earlier. In that last battle, there was an expansion there, and it would have been great because he would have been able to creep up the entire half of the map, and then off one, two, three, four, five base, Zerg can really sit back and macro hard, get up to hive tech, and start getting out some higher tech units. Uh, but aside from that, and aside from his overlord spread and some just uh, some basic minor issues, he was getting infestors. Good job. Infestors are super powered now. Aside from that and some minor issues, Kijjiba played an excellent game. This has been Admiral Newkirk casting the High School StarCraft Team League. Uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.